before the world was ending, they say they had hopes. Harder to come by now. Maybe a working ray lighter would brighten things up a bit. Figures it would be easy if it was on, but you'll have to find it first. Figures the ray lighter is too dangerous to leave lying around. You should grab it before someone else does. Otherwise, they might wind up on the ray lighter's wrong end. Figures you'd destroy others, though, right? Some things will sleep soon, others are waking up. It's a wonder this is still such a lush place.
It's the Chug Yard. Was that lightning? That's not too bad. Tribes always scavenging for scrap. And the yard has plenty to go around. But they should have stuck to looting instead of playing around with sprockets. Bomber bonkers busy ram banging the door. This is your chance. Zap them good. Super effective. Even more brains. Let's see. What you do here matters to you and the world. can do anything. The sky's the limit. Now, let's take this back to Earth. Wow, you really took that all the way down to the end. In flames. It's a wonder some of these up and downs still work. Guess they built machines better in the past. I need to brush up on my Wando, but I have a feeling he believes it was you that caused the bang at the yard. Fruit, drip, drink, typo. Oh, and he says he knows you. You used to call him Gizmo. He gave you the oil-greased hands when he taught you how to upcycle. 
Gizmo remembers you. So memory can be different. You know the story, but sometimes the truth it brings is personal. He hopes you remember that one time he taught you to upcycle and hopes you've had some use for it over the years. He understands history made Loopa Loopin a big part of your past, your present, and soon, your future. You still believe there's some good in everyone. You still have hope for tomorrow. He says you should know that what's meant to be will always find a way, but history shouldn't consume you. Gizmo understands you still have strong feelings, but urges you to keep them under control. You've witnessed firsthand what it'll lead to. Well, speaking for the dark, we approve. Can't believe they let you manipulate them like that. You're just jealous that you're no good at it. Who would want... Winners! Hard to believe the world is actually going to survive. Just seemed impossible till now. Grateful to you for coming back and doing your best to change things. You were the only chance they had. Wonders if you liked working with the Ankati. They make the most of what little they have, even the air. But that's not important now. Gizmo says it's taken a long time to bring the past up to the present, and where you go from here is up to you. You need to set the past aside, at least for now. He can't leave the Underyard as he has no protection against the vacuum in the Dead Zone, so you need to salvage scrap to upcycle the Mecton, starting with the old crate outside. You should return when you've retrieved the scrap. There's no... That's what he decided to call it after he saw it for the first time. They're short of breath and death to this zone. Better take care. He who half breathes, half lives. That's the leftover you're looking for. Strange not having the sky above. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
He says that's enough to get the Mekton functional. You'll have an engine, a fuel soaker, a gun and a gathering net, but no armor, nor enough oxygen supply. He made a suction device so the Mekton can use the black tar as an instant refuel. You can also use it to clear oily goo puddles, so you can pass and access hard-to-get-to areas. He's been working on another project for the Mekton, a cannon, but it needs ammunition, and by that he means the scripts. He says if they're trained right, they'll turn into a distraction for the Jumbo Puff. The best way to find scripts is to go talk to Moog. He knows the ins and outs of every breathing thing left alive after the apocalypse. Unfortunately, this means you'll have to venture farther out into the dead zone than Moog's camp on the steep depot. One, it's a little feisty and tough critter, a perfect fit for a live ammunition, if you ask him. Go see what you can see in this fresh day. Can you imagine how this place used to look before the dead oil flood? The grease monkey's mecton is built sturdy, just like himself. Time to walk on your own legs. That over there is Steepo Depot, the cliffside that Moog hangs on to. This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Says a monster hunter hears many things on the wind. Moog says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for us. Claims he mostly kills whoever he doesn't like. Says it's wild that the world seems to be coming back, but he supposes that means more monsters for him to shoot. Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Thought you were too smart to hunt with the Ankati. Doesn't understand how they can see anything through those masks. But, they get in the way. When you're monster haunting, you need to see everything. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore. Right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall and short. Yeah. Thinks that it all hangs on the tree of life. When it started to fail, everything changed. Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Says it's not far at all. 
Fortunately for you, the scripts seem to have acclimatized themselves to the otherwise uninhabitable dead zone. We're all heroes of our own stories, or so we hope. Stompity stomp. Wait, it's the Scrip Hola. Place is just filled with critters. <laughs> Disgusting biohazard. Just gross. Idea. Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up and you can get up to that entrance there. It's so active out here with the light. You need to line up the switches so they match. Good, that's enough electric current. Watch those teeth. Might not need that now, but you will later. Amazed the network.
Now, this is the way to travel. Look at the controls in this thing. Moog asks if you know the first rule of monster haunting. It's to go where the monsters are. To haunt, you must know the grounds of your prey. Few monsters warrant the fear we have for them. Start with one monster and take it from there. Says as long as there are monsters out there. Can you feel that? It's getting dusky in here. Right! Slow down! No! Full speed! What? Your destiny waits on the path you... Gizmo wants to help if he can. Asks if you've heard about the shootout at Bubfield. Can't believe you turned out so good after the horrors you saw at the claws of Looper Lupin. Says talking to you was interesting. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Seems you've found your place with the Ankati tribe. At the rate that monster is Gizmo wants to help. He says you need to go find Moog's camp on the cliffside of Steep Depot in the dead zone. Has plenty to do, so no worries. Gizmo wants to help if he says talking to you was interesting.
In the old world, roads like this really led somewhere. Now, most of them lead to disaster. Don't trip over what you can't see. What do you think of this place?
走。走走。走走。别走。走走。He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mechton's claw crane cannon with infinite am- That's the special weapon he made to store the scripts in the Mechton. It will be strong enough to launch them at the Jumbo Puff. Gizmo's made vehicles bef- It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. There's time to improve the Mechton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mechton with on your own. He's sure you remember enough of what he taught you about upcycling to fit some scronky- Gizmo wants to help if he can. Says you-